while. But will you welcome Diana Cooper and Susan Phoenix. Now, um, Diana, you have encountered angels. Tell me about the first time. The first time was over 20 years ago, and I was getting divorced and in total despair. I didn't know what my future could possibly be. I had no spiritual background, no religious background at all. I had no psychic energy. And yet I threw myself into a chair and said, if there's anything out there, show me, help me. Yeah. And an angel came in. What's the angel look like? A golden being, about six foot tall. I couldn't see any wings, but an absolute feeling of love, no fear whatsoever, just a feeling of being held in peace. And the angel took me on a journey and showed me my future. And I came back feeling completely different. I had to change my life. But from that moment, my life did change. The journey that you went on, I mean, was yes. this um, a mental journey? Was it something like a Christmas carol, Charles Dickens, the ghost of Christmas past, that sort of thing? It literally felt as if I'd been taken out of my body and I was flying with the angel. And um, the angel kept taking me up into the... Uh, to a high place and then dropping me and I beheld in light and then took me over a hall full of people with rainbow colored auras and I said am I down there in the audience and the angel said no you're to be on the platform and showed me people talking from a platform about spiritual things I was gobsmacked and you didn't have any kind of spiritual background as you said so what did you Nothing do on whatsoever. foot of this experience I wrote it all down and I waited and I started to meet people of like mind and then I trained to become a therapist and I worked in that way for several years then I started to write my books starting with my transformation series and then ten years after the first occasion I was lying in the bath and the angels came back again how many three this time same sort of six foot absolutely golden. absolutely and uh, I was asking for some guidance about the classes I ran and they said we want you to tell people about angels and I said no I don't know anything about angels I don't want to do that and they said who's doing your work is it your higher self or your ego so I said okay and I got out of the bath and sat on the bed and the three gave me all sorts of information for my first angel book a little light on angels and from that moment they supported me and I worked with them and I still do. And I've had many, many angel experiences since then and seen many angels. You believe that everyone has an angel? They said every single person has a guardian angel who comes w into you at birth and stays with you and is holding your divine potential for that lifetime and constantly beaming it towards H you. How do you tap into that energy then from the angel? You ask. The first thing to do is ask them to help you and then they will come and connect with you and help what you. What sort of uh, tasks do they undertake? I mean, for well, example, the washing machine doesn't work. Will, will your angel fix the washing machine? The angel may fix the washing machine. They can do extraordinary things. And why would they not fix it if they've got these because powers? Why would they here, choose not to fix it? We're here on a physical plane. Some things we have as our learnings. And if it's our learning, then they won't fix it. But they will help us perhaps to find the right person who will fix it. They will help us with bereavement, they will help us in many, many ways, on a daily basis if we ask them. Um, there are people who have gone through life having learned uh, the prayer to their angel guardian. Right. Uh, most people of a certain age in Ireland would have learned it in their yes. catechism classes. And there'd be people who are devout and yet some terrible things happen to them and they've said the, the prayer to their angel guardian. How do you explain that this guardian angel who's supposed to look after them right. did not? We live in a plane of free will. And if your soul commands that you go through a certain experience, then your angel must step aside and allow you to have that experience. However... It's a bit of a get-out clause for the angel guardian, isn't it? No, I don't think so. You see, some people say, well, where was the angel when my child was um, yes. knocked over by a car? And the answer is, your angel was standing by, full of compassion, trying to help. But if your child's soul had to have that experience, maybe that was a wake-up call for the whole family, then the angel has to stand back and let it happen. Mm -hmm. But we'll be helping with healing and in many other ways. Um, you believe there are flocks of angels coming to earth in the present time? I believe we're living at an incredibly important time in the history of the planet. 
and we're coming towards 2012. When Why is that the, significant? There's a huge astrological change then, and it's the end of a 26,000-year period and the start of a new 26,000-year period. And how do you know that? And I'm going to be talking about this on Sunday at my seminar at the RDS and explaining to people why it's so important to be that we're here right now and what we can all do to help the planet rise. Susan could be the solution for me. Other people watching will say, this is daft, this is crackers, mm. this is crazy stuff. Mm. What do if, you say if you to the first group, you know, who might, you know, their mm. families might feel they'd be exploited mm. by all of this, mm. and what do you say to the second group? I think that there are lots of people out there that have been tremendously helped in their grief by the angels. I've had stories about people who've been desperate, didn't know how they could go to the funeral. One woman told me this, and she asked the angels, and she woke in the middle of the night with angels singing over the bed, and she could hear them. And all her grief was taken away, and she felt completely okay. And they will come in and help you if you ask. Now, Susan and Diana, mm. this is highly commercial. I've been on mm. your website. Mm. There's lots of books for sale, um, mm. CDs, as you said. Yes. Uh, the, the seminar itself costs 75 euro. Yes. It's not all going into your pocket. The organizers no, will not. get some of that. Um, and people say it is about money. I think that once you start working with the angels and the spiritual realms, then everything in your life starts to flow, including prosperity. Including and money. Include abundance. Uh, prosperity is about uh, money and abundance. And abundance is every form. It's love, it's happiness, it's everything in your life. It starts to flow in a beautiful way. And there are many people...